First, Jacksonville City Council members uniting against what some members call an attack on House on Home Rule. The City Council passed a resolution opposing proposed state legislation capping the amount of money public utility companies could contribute to local governments. And tonight, our Andrew Badillo is joining us in the newsroom. And Andrew, what is the City Council's greatest fear about all of this? Yeah, Anthony, the privatization of JEA, which contributes over $100 million to city functions such as police, fire, parks, and recreation. A council member, Matt Carlucci, called JEA the goose that lays the golden egg and believes Tallahassee is trying to take it. Tonight, city council let the state know Jacksonville's golden egg is not for sale. Moving up. The agenda to Jacksonville City Council. I don't think this is done in good faith. Tallahassee has crossed the line. The passage of House Bill 1331 and Senate Bill 1380 could result in a loss of revenue. The city telling the state to stay away from its golden egg, JEA. This is now more important than ever that we send this strong message that we do, we do not want this to be passed. City Council unanimously voted to pass a resolution opposing proposed state legislation capping how much public utilities could contribute to local governments. Is this talking about selling JEA? It's not, but it's like a backdoor way. If you can get the finances away from the city, you are hurting us, you are crippling us. Thank you um, for this resolution, and I believe it'll, it'll carry a lot of weight in Tallahassee. Council President Terrence Freeman says he spoke to Duval Delegation Chair Wyman Duggan. It says Duggan does not support the legislation that he was willing and is still willing to take back any recommendations or concerns that JEA has, the auditors have, or that we have back to Tallahassee because we know that it is traveling through the committee process. The city's message is clear. You better be prepared for a fight if you come for the golden egg. Well, we did reach out to House Representative Duggan, but have not heard back at this time. Jacksonville City Council is nearing a settlement with the plaintiffs in its ongoing redistricting saga. The agreement would come almost a year after the initial lawsuit was filed and over 161000 in legal fees. The city asked the court to halt its appeal of a racial gerrymandering ruling. The city was appealing a court order saying it had to use a map drawn by the plaintiffs. Council member Priestley, Brenda Priestley Jackson is not in favor of the plaintiffs map saying it will have an opposite effect. My thoughts are that we've regressed, that the reality is going to be after this new map redistricting, we will lose black democratic representation and we will lose female representation. So will we be down possibly to one or two ladies on the council in a city that's a majority population of females? And we will be down probably two black democratic representatives, which might be a total of three African American representatives on the council as well. Priestley Jackson is serving her final few months on city council. The new map pit her against current city council member Jacoby Pittman in District 10. Priestley Jackson decided not to run, saying the district was unjust. In the newsroom, Andrew Badillo, First Coast News on your side.